Hello everyone, I am Ethan Hisak Shin of the Transitional Justice Working Group and I will be talking about the international human rights system today. Uh, when people first hear about the international human rights system, people go like, oh, that must be such a difficult uh, thing that you know, only lawyers can do or people with some kind of uh, academic background can do. Well, that is not actually the case. And the whole point of having or uh, the existence of this kind of uh, UN human rights system is actually to help uh, NGOs or activists uh, bring their case, uh, uh, further their uh, advocacy in terms of human rights. So the goal of uh, my talk today would basically is to familiarize yourselves with the UN human rights system and to learn how to actually utilize it in the human, field of human rights work that you uh, uh, um, actually carry out. So first of all, why talk about the UN human rights system? Uh, obviously, if you feel, if you experience human rights violations, uh, the first recourse that you will find uh, will usually be in the domestic courts. Uh, you can sue the government or the other public authorities uh, before uh, the district court, uh, appeals court, uh, end up in the Supreme Court or even the Constitutional Court. If the court uh, find you find the violations and rule in your favor and the order remedies, obviously it would, will uh, resolve the issue uh, right there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in many cases, that is not necessarily the case. Uh, especially, for example, if you are a member of an ethnic or religious minority, uh, in a society where discrimination is rampant, uh, it will be very difficult for you to find justice uh, even before uh, in a court of law. In, in such cases, uh, one uh, way to find uh, human, uh, to realize human rights uh, would be to may appeal your case to the UN human rights system. Uh, the UN human rights bodies uh, usually refer to universal human rights norms. And they also carry the weight or the gravita of the, the UN, which is the most well-known international organization in the world. Uh, unfortunately, the UN uh, human rights experts uh, are not uh, experts of the local issues uh, or the local human rights conditions. And this crucial uh, information gap uh, needs to be filled by the local uh, civil society uh, or activists or advocates. Now you might wonder uh, if the UN is the only uh, available uh, international human rights uh, mechanism. If you are actually living in Europe uh, or Latin America or Africa, uh, there are actually regional uh, human rights bodies as well. Uh, for example, the European Court of Human Rights, uh, the International Court of uh, American, Inter-American Inter Court of Human Rights, and the Afri African Court of Human and People's Rights uh, serve the peoples in those three continents. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the case of South Korea or in the broader Asia Pacific region, Asia region, uh, there are uh, no uh, regional human rights uh, mechanisms in place. And uh, because of the political situation in the continent, uh, one is not exactly expected to be created in the near future which basically leaves you only with the UN uh, human rights system as a viable option. Uh, so let's look at the brief history of the UN human rights system, uh, which goes back to the adoption of the Charter of the United Nations in 1945 at the end of World War II. Uh, the UN Charter uh, was the first international treaty that actually mentioned uh, human rights in its text. Uh, its provisions uh, ob oblige the member states to respect and observe our human rights without distinction as to race, sex, uh, language, or religion. The Charter itself actually does not contain substantive rights uh, or obligations that the, the member states must observe. But in 1948, three years after the creation of the United Nations, the UN General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, which, actually, which, lists, uh, which lists a number of human rights that all human beings uh, enjoy by virtue of being uh, members, of the human, members of the humanity. 
uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights itself is not an international treaty and it does not have, uh, by itself, that does not have legally binding force. But in the next decades, uh, the Universal Declaration or the contents, uh, the rights contained in the, uh, in the Universal Declaration have been recognized as, uh, as uh, universal rights in uh, many national jurisdictions. Uh, and also, uh, many, human, many human rights treaties, uh, for example, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights or the International Covenant on, civ on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights uh, have been adopted, uh, finding its roots in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So that's, that's how the UN human rights system came into being uh, since 1945. Uh, there are basically three main uh, UN human rights mechanisms or tools uh, available. The first is the UN trade treaty, uh, human rights treaty bodies. Uh, these treaty bodies are mandated to, uh, the, are composed of independent human rights experts. And their mission uh, is to ensure that the state's parties to individual human rights treaties actually uh, observe the obligations contained in those uh, human rights treaties. So the members, the state's parties uh, have the obligation to submit periodic reports, basically progress reports on how they have been actually observing uh, the provisions of the human rights treaties in their country. And in some cases, the individuals uh, living in those countries can bring, up, can bring up case before these uh, human rights treaty bodies uh, claiming that the governments have violated the provisions within the human rights treaties. Second, uh, the UN Human Rights Council appoints what are called the UN Human Rights Mechanism, uh, UN Special Procedures. Uh, these are basically uh, uh, human rights ombudsmen on, on uh, various thematic and country issues. Uh, for example, uh, there are special rapporteurs on torture uh, or a special rapporteur on extra, extrajudicial killings. And there are also working groups on uh, arbitrary detention and on uh, enforced disappearances, uh, as well as uh, special rapporteurs on uh, countries with grave human rights violations, such as Myanmar uh, or North Korea. Uh, lastly, uh, the UN Human Rights Council has what is called the Universal Periodic Review. Under the UPR system, uh, basically uh, all 193 uh, UN member states are obligated to submit their human rights situation uh, for review every, three, every four or five years, uh, which is uh, reviewed by other uh, UN member states uh, who come up with recommendations uh, to improve the human rights situations in those in the country under review. So that's the gist of the UN human rights system and I look forward to elaborating further on this topic in the future uh, talks that I will give. Thank you.